Hey guys, it's Levi again. We're back with another astrophotography video and today we're going to be looking at some software and some programs that you're going to need to get into astrophotography. A lot of this is going to be at a very basic level and I'm going to try to give a quick rundown on a lot of the programs that you can start downloading and you can start getting into and looking at uh, more closely as you begin imaging whether it's planets or the moon or deep sky uh, astrophotography. And so um, I'm not going to be doing any crazy tutorials on any of these programs and I'm not actually able to give a lot of description of what some of these things do because a lot of these programs are actually very complicated um, in the sense that they can be very advanced but they are easy to use so maybe uh, complicated is not the right word there but um, yeah so we're going to just look at that today and I'm just going to kind of lay out all the programs in kind of a work workflow oriented way in the sense that um, what programs you might use as you go throughout the night. And so um, we're going to get right into it and try to make this pretty quick. Um, so the first program that we're looking at here is Stellarium. And Stellarium is a very neat program. I love it. Um, before I'm going out, I'll usually pull up Stellarium and see what kind of things are going to be in the night sky um, on the evening that I'm going out imaging so I can decide on a target that I want to try. Um, that evening. There are apps that do this, um, but I found that Stellarium is great for this. Um, you'll see why in just a second here. So we're going to open this right up. Most of these programs that I'm going to go through today are free. All these, most of, these soft, most of the software here today is going to be free. Um, there is a $30 or $35 program, and that's Backyard EOS. We'll get into that in a little bit, but um, most of the software here is free, which is great because most of us have already spent way too much money on our setups, and so um, this that's good news. And so you can see here, it's just, yeah, like I said, it's a planetarium for your computer, um, catalog with, you know, anything you, you need to find in, in the night sky. And basically, um, this is great for that. And in a more advanced way, Stellarium can actually be used um, with uh, Stellarium Scope, it's called, which uses your Orion Atlas or Celestron AVX mount and allows you to actually control the mount from the program. And so essentially, you can click on a target in the sky in the program and uh, slew your telescope right to it. But we're going to pull this up here just quickly so you can have a glance at what this looks like when you first pull it up so you're not kind of overwhelmed uh, But with this. So I can show you a little bit about um, some basic features. Like I said, I'm not doing a tutorial with any of these programs, and some of these I might not even open up. But um, I think Stellarium is one that is worth opening up just to take a peek at. So um, as you can see here, basically what it opens up with is, you can see my location is West Fargo, North Dakota. Um, what it gives you is basically a 3D view of the world of the night, um, of the night sky. Right now it's uh, you know kind of daytime here a little bit as we get into the evening, but as we're looking north here, um, down here you have a grid of options, and this allows you to, you can um, show deep sky objects, and you're not going to see anything here. We're going to fast forward. You can see the time there, and the more you click it, the faster it goes. Um, take this right into the nighttime sky. So it's now dark outside at 1900 hours. Uh, or is that 7 o'clock, 7.30? Um, and you can see here, we can take a look at what we're going to expect in our night sky. And so this is really neat. You can turn on um, all kinds of different stuff, constellation arts, constellation labels, constellation art, uh, sorry, lines, labels, and arch. Um, you can turn on the equatorial grids and azimuth. Uh, grids, um, but you can see lots of cool stuff here, and this is just great. Um, you can actually click on an object and get lots more information about that. Um, and then if you've got the mount set up and all the software configured for Solarium Scope, you can actually press Control-1 in your mount, and your telescope will actually point at what you're looking at if you are polar aligned. But um, I'll maybe do another video on that later. That's kind of a little bit more work to get that configured, but um, very cool. Um, let you click around in here, and you can click on all these things. You can zoom in. Um, I'm on a touchpad here, so my zoom functions are a little uh, wonky, but um, yeah, that's this is Stellarium, great great program. Um, like I said before, I'm going out. I'll sometimes boot this up and just see what I'm going to be looking at for the evening. So um, if I don't already have something framed up, so um, that is Stellarium. Um, the next program we're going to look at here is SharpCap, um, and you can find that at the URL you can see at the top here, SharpCap.co.uk. Um, and so SharpCap is essentially, like it says here, is an easy to use and powerful astronomy camera capture tool. Um, it can be used with dedicated astronomy cameras, webcams, and USB frame grabbers. So um, like that's saying, this isn't something you're going to be using 
with your DSLR or anything like that, but this is more so um, going to be used for the main purpose that most people use SharpCap for is for uh, polar alignment. Um, there's a $5 fee to get the pro version of SharpCap. I think it's $5 per year. Um, you can see that down here that allows you to do polar alignment using your guide scope. Easiest way to use the easiest to use polar alignment tool. Um, I've heard great things about this. Everybody online on the forums all seems to you they all seem to use SharpCap um, to do their polar alignment. And essentially, what um, SharpCap does is it basically looks at looks through your guide scope for a star and it has you actually rotate the mount 90 degrees on its um, I think which axis on one of the axis um, it has you rotate the mount 90 degrees and then it compares the images and sees which way you need to move your um, to move your mount so that you are properly polar aligned and it can get you um, really honed in if you're not really comfortable using the polar polar scope um, the one caveat with that is that you do need to be within five degrees, I think, of polarity, um, uh, looking at Polaris through your through your polar scope. So you kind of have to have a rough polar alignment in a way before you can really um, begin to use this. But um, basically, you'll be selecting your camera, um, and then there's there's a polar alignment tool, polar line there uh, that you'll be able to do. Um, you can find tutorials for this online. It's a great program. Um, yeah, this is basically going to be your polar alignment tool. Um, there's other ones out there, but like they said, they are the best one out there, um, and I, I do believe that. So um, that's sharp cap. So we're going to get into. <clears throat> so as you're going through your night, um, like like I said, the first thing you're going to want to do is, I didn't say this actually, but I'm saying it now. First thing you want to do is polar align your telescope, and you want to do that with all of your gear loaded on, um, because you with the weight and things you can throw off your alignment and so um and the, maybe even your balance of your scope so you want to get all that situated and get polar aligned before you do anything else with your scope um and with your mount so um sharp cap will help you with that and then the next thing you're going to want to do um is once you um once you get your camera mounted and things like that you're going to um, probably pull up backyard eos and backyard eos is if we can find it here, get their download page. Yeah, here it is. Backyard EOS. So Backyard EOS is basically just going to be your image acquisition software. Um, take control over your Canon DSLR. That's basically what you're doing. You're instead of having to stand up by your telescope and press capture and you know modify your your um, uh, modify your ISO, modify your exposure length, those sorts of things. You can do most of that in Backyard EOS. And so um, that's great for this. And this is, like I said, you're going to set your most of your acquisition. You can set um, you can set up a program where it says, basically, I want to capture, you know, three minutes of exposures at ISO 1600. And I want to take 60 of those exposures. Um, and you can just click the button to go and get that ready. But um, what you also want to do with this is actually get your um, camera focused in. Uh, make sure you have your, you know, as you're tweaking on your telescope, your focus, you want to focus in your camera um, with that. And like, um, like I said, I'm not doing any tutorials with any of this, but basically you're going to hit connect. You're going to select your camera here. It's probably going to arrow off because mine's not connected. Yeah. Um, and basically you'll see a live view um, if you click on the, there's an option up here once you get it cooked up and you'll be able to see a live view of what you see through your, your uh, camera, through your telescope. And so you'll be able to kind of own in your focus there and uh, get ready to start shooting. So, um, yeah, that is that. And then when you're ready and you've got your, you've slewed your target and you're polar aligned and you're focused up, you've found your target, it's time to start shooting. And so before you do that, you want to get your guiding set up and that's where it, PhD2 uh, comes in, um, openphdguiding.org. You can find the download here. Um, and basically, this PhD, PhD stands for Push Here Dummy. Um, and Push Here Dummy 2 is a telescope guiding software that simplifies the process of tracking a guide star, star letting you concentrate on other aspects of deep sky imaging or spectro, spectroscopy. So, um, you can see here, this is a little preview of what's going on. 
basically with um, pitch PhD, I don't know why I have a hard time saying that, um, with Push Your Dummy, you're going to, it's going to be looking through your guide scope and you're going to um, select a star and then you're going to begin your, um, once you're polar aligned, you're going to begin your, your guiding. And this graph here is basically, you're looking for a very thin, not too many ups and downs. You're looking for a pretty straight graph here. And that'll give you an indication of whether your alignment uh, is pretty well. And you're looking for values. It's very small over here. It will let me zoom in here. You can see here the RA and the declination uh, degrees. You want to keep that below one for a pretty good. Um, that means you're you're guiding pretty well. If you're getting some crazy things, you might have to redo your polar alignment and uh, look at what issues may, might be happening. Um, I do know that lots of times guys are caught off guard because all of a sudden it's cloudy out and they didn't expect that, and so they're losing their tracking because of the clouds and they can't see their guide stars um, anymore. So be careful of that. And uh, that's push your dummy too. Um, I don't know a lot about that one. I haven't actually got a chance to use it yet, um, so I don't know I'm doing a you know introduction to it. But I do know that this is what most guys use, and they've had pretty good success with that. So, um, yeah, and of course with guiding, you're only going to be doing that if you're doing any sort of deep sky uh, imaging. So, yeah, we're going to move on to PIP, Planetary Imaging Pro Preprocessor. So we've now moved into after you've taken your images, whether it's um, deep sky or planetary lunar, but PIP in particular is going to be for planetary imaging. Um, and so basically, like it says, it is a Windows application designed for pre-processing planetary images before stacking them with image stacking software such as Registax. And we'll go over Registax next here. Um, but PIP basically, like it says, its its purpose is to crop the image down, center center the the object in all of the frames and crop them so they're the same size and then also reduce and get rid of all those ugly frame, uh, frames where something might have been um, black or or just a black screen or you know washed out or whatever it picks a the best quality frames out of there and uh, kind of just cleans everything up in a way um, in a sense and so um, pips great it's very easy to use I don't think I need to do a, a open that up and show anything about what's going on um, basically you're just uploading your your images or your video. Um, if you're doing planetary, you're usually doing video, and you're just uh, throwing that in there, and it's outputting basically a better version of that. So um, then we're going to move on to Registax, and Registax, you're going to pull in that video, and most likely be stacking that um, video. And again, we're down, going down the planetary lunar route here. We're stacking planetary images. Um, if we're doing deep sky stuff, we're doing deep sky stacker uh, for a lot of that. So. Um, with Registax, though, we're going to take that, that video or that image from PIP, those images, and we're going to upload them here. And Registax is actually going to stack them on top of each other and um, allow us to do a little bit of processing as well um, with that, you know, RBG align, things like that. So um, Registax, again, is easy to use. You're basically just importing things. You can tweak, you know, things here and there in configurations, but overall, the, the process is pretty uh, straightforward and uh, simple to use. So... Um, Red Strikes is another great one. Um, so the next, the other route you can go is these Deep Sky Stacker. And like it says, it's for deep sky images. So if you're doing any sort of galaxies or nebulas or anything like that, you're going to want to use Deep Sky Stacker. And like it says, um, it's planetary is typically built for video. Planetary software is built for video because you're usually acquiring video of planets. Um, but with deep sky stuff, obviously you're taking long exposures. And so... Um, Deep Sky Stacker is stacking those images for you and, uh, yeah, registering stacker, uh, stacking simple, yeah, some simple post process, uh, post stacking processes to quickly view the final result and then, uh, saving that file onto whatever format you need. So Deep Sky Stacker, uh, again, free to use, uh, like these programs mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned it, so I'll mention it now, but Backyard EOS was the, was the paid one. It is the main image acquisition, um, acquiring software so it is worth buying <clears throat> I think there are other options out there um, I don't know any off the top of my head but there, there are other options out there that guys have had some success with but you're gonna find the most support for this one online probably so um, yeah that's deep <clears throat> that's deep sky stacker and then the auto stacker this this is kind of just an honorary mention basically this is more image stacking software um, some guys have used this it's it's pretty successful. It's done well for guys. Um, I think this is typically used under planetary situations, um, as far as I'm concerned. 
yeah, you'll see some sample images here. You'll see Venus and uh, the Sun and um, Jupiter. So yeah, we're looking at mostly planetary uh, images with auto stacker. So I do know that I've opened some things. I like to open up some of my planetary stuff up in auto stacker and uh, tweak it around a little bit before uh, doing kind of a master edit, um, which is as we're moving on here to the next discussion, which I forgot to pull the tab up for, is GIMP. And this is basically your free version of Pix Insight or Photoshop. Um, this is what I use to tweak a few things on my images. I don't do a lot of heavy editing. Some guys do a little bit more than others. Um, but uh, I use I use GIMP for a lot of my stuff because I'm too stingy to pay the big fees that you'll see with um, Photoshop and PixInsight unless you're a student or something like that. You get a, get a pretty good deal or if you're torrenting or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it for for the software. Um, quick rundown, Stellarium, Sharp Cap, Push Here Dummy 2, Backyard EOS, PIP, Registax, Deep Sky Stacker, and maybe Auto Stacker um, for your main workflow for the evening and for what you're going to need on your laptop to get out there and in the field and uh, taking pictures and uh, getting some cool results. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe I'll be doing some more advanced uh, advanced tutorials on some of these programs or anything like that if anyone needs. But um, overall, that's basically the rundown of what you're getting into uh, with the software and programs you're going to need. So uh, thanks for watching.